Do you think this floats? Paint asked, hefting the plasticky white box that was our delivery for the day. It had a label on top, but no visible seams. I wasn't even 100% sure that it opened, much less what was inside it. We weren't paid to know. It kind of looks like it should, I said. Let's not drop it in the river and find out. Sure you don't want me to carry it? I stretched out my long human arms as we walked. Nope, Paint said cheerily. My turn. She rested her lizardy snout on top of it, clutching the thing like an orange-scaled toddler with a toolbox made for adults. It was a cute sight. I kept that observation to myself. A stiff breeze made me glad for my coat. This was a solid walk between the spaceship and the client's home, and while the scenery was nice, it was a bit cool in the shadows. Properly dressed, I could appreciate the alien trees that twisted into improbable spirals of blue bark alongside this tributary of the river full of sparkling crustaceans. The rest of the crew had split up to follow different tributaries, with different deliveries, but those were surely not as pretty as this one. Paint didn't shiver at the breeze because cold-blooded lizard aliens don't shiver. She had a small heat shawl that looked like a red bandana tied around her neck. She'd assured me that it would keep her plenty warm, since it had little heat pockets of something or other that would generate warmth. And with the red on top of her mottled orange scales, it made her match the kind of painted sunset she was named for. We'd been walking long enough to make me regret not asking to use the hover bike when the tributary widened out into a lake, with the client's house smack dab in the middle. It was an artful weaving of curved wooden beams, decorated with clay mortar and narrow stripes of wildflowers planted between the beams. Not a window or door in sight. I'd noticed before that a lot of alien species could be compared to one earth animal or another, sometimes subtly and sometimes in very obvious ways. The clients we were delivering to today were basically civilized beavers. I found this very funny in a way I couldn't have articulated, so I kept that to myself too. So, do we just yell from the shore? Paint asked, slowing as we approached. I think I see stepping stones. I told her, let's get a closer look. As we followed the shoreline, the stepping stones came into view. They turned out to be stepping logs, planted in the mud of the lake bottom, with a platform waiting in front of the house made of the same woven beams. No garden on this one, though, just slippery-looking moss. Oh, and a lantern on a post that glowed like a miniature sun. If I didn't miss my guess, the little box near the top of the pole looked like a doorbell. I think our drop point is over there, I said, coming to a stop near the first stepping log. Paint held the box more tightly. Really? Surely they'll hear us if we yell loudly enough. She looked around in that jerky, lizard-like way, clearly hoping for any better options. I wasn't happy about it either, but at least the steps were close together. The only other sign of civilization around was the sharp drop-off of water at the end of the lake. This really was a beaver lodge. They'd even made a dam. Are these safe? Paint asked, poking one clawed foot at the nearest log. I should hope so, I said. I don't know how they expect to get their deliveries otherwise. Paint pulled her foot back. Can we try yelling first? I shrugged. Worth a shot. So we both stood there and shouted like the politest of absolute maniacs. And it did no good whatsoever. Either the sound didn't carry through walls and or water, or the client wasn't home, or they didn't care about the package. But probably they just couldn't hear us. Do you want to stay on the shore? I suggested. My legs are longer. I can handle the steps. No, I can do it. Paint stood tall like a confident toddler with a toolbox and stepped carefully onto the log, tail waving for balance. At least let me carry the box, I said. Pretty sure I can hold it with one arm if it's not that heavy. Paint's eyes were wide and her mouth open for nervous breathing as she looked down at the water. Yeah, okay. I put a foot on the log next to her, noticing that it wobbled slightly, which was just spectacular for morale, and I cautiously took the box. When I had it, Paint turned and leapt to the next log. It really wasn't that heavy. It probably floated. I was not going to find out. I tucked it under one arm and followed paint. We made it to the platform without any major disasters. 
There was indeed a doorbell on the lamppost, which paint pressed triumphantly. Then we stood on the platform and waited, with paint holding onto the pole for support and me wondering what the inside of the house looked like. Was the client in the bathroom? What was that even like here? I saw motion in the water first and pointed it out moments before something the size of a St. Bernard surfaced with a splash in front of us. Paint yelped and stepped back, her grip on the pole the only thing keeping her from scampering off the platform entirely. I jumped too but held my position and got one shoe wet for my troubles. I was immediately 15% colder. Give it already, demanded the client, perched on the underwater structure that held the platform up. He may have been an alien beaver, but his fur was all blue stripes like a fashionable tiger, and he was definitely glaring at us. I stood up straight. Payment first, if you please, I said in my best customer service voice. I really hoped that this client wasn't going to argue about it. This was a terrible place for that kind of debate, but the client just grumbled and rummaged in a belt pouch that I hadn't realized he was wearing, then slapped a handful of sparkly coins onto the platform. They looked like the local currency we'd been told to expect, something made from the shells of crustaceans like the ones filling the river upstream. I had no idea if it was enough. I just have to hope it was. Thank you, I said, handing over the package. The client grabbed it, grunted, and disappeared with a smaller splash this time. I shot paint a relieved glance while I pried the coins off the muddy wood. Washing them at the edge of the platform was a tempting idea, but I didn't want to drop any, so I just rubbed the mud off as best I could and shoved them into an empty pocket. Hooray for pants with lots of those. I rinsed my fingers in the chilly water, rubbed them dry on my pants, then turned to paint. Ready to go? At her eager nod, I started across the logs with every other step squishy and cold. The logs were mostly stable, mostly, all but that last one, which gave in an alarming way when I hopped across. Watch out for the, splash, paint. The water was deep for the shoreline, and she sank nearly to her nose tip, arms flailing in a useless way that was more instinct than thought. I reached out for one and caught it, leaning and praying to anything that would listen that I wasn't about to fall in too. I managed to haul her out, splashing icy water everywhere. She wasn't moving much, stiff with cold shock, the shawl sodden and useless. I scrambled to grab handfuls of leafy weeds to dry her scales. Hopefully these aren't something toxic that wasn't in the briefing, I thought grimly. Nothing to do about it if they are. Turn over, I'll dry your other side. I directed, unfastening the shawl. Paint moved one arm, slow as a sloth. I rolled her over onto dry ground, then did my speedy best to get most of the water off. It didn't help. She was hunched over and staring like a cold-blooded creature in dire straits indeed. Okay, I said, thinking quickly. Let's get you off this cold ground and give me a hug. It took some doing, but soon I had my crewmate on my lap with my coat wrapped around her. Wow, that was cold like hugging an ice pack. She moved a little, nestling close. Does that help? A tiny nod. Can you stand? Head shake. Okay, I thought some more. New plan. Do you know what a piggyback ride is? Of course she didn't, but it gave me something to talk about as a distraction while I pried her away just long enough to flip my coat around with the opening in the back and urge her to climb on. No one's been able to tell me why it's named after pigs, and not an animal we actually ride, but my guess is that there were farm kids involved, I said as she got settled. They're small enough to ride a pig. Not a terribly safe choice, though, depending on the pig. I freed a hand to grab the shawl and squeeze out the water before shoving it into a different pocket. Then, before I stood, I got out my phone and called the ship. Kavli answered. Hey, Robin, what's up? Medical emergency, I said. Paint got cold. Got it. How cold? Fell in the river, which is frigid. Can someone grab the hover cycle and meet us with a heat blanket? Already on it. Eggskin, she yelled for the medic and ended the call. Hope. Fast, Paint hissed. Even if they're not, I said as I pocketed my phone and got to my feet. I'm about to be. Nothing raises body heat for my species like a little exercise. Let's see if we can make that heat blanket redundant. I took off across the grassy shoreline, 
pretending I was carrying one of my baby cousins who happened to be incredibly dangerously cold, but was warming steadily.